This is one of the rarest frogs in the forest, and contrary to what you might believe, just leaving it will probably result in the death of the entire species. In fact, it was this realization that led me to follow the journey of the gopher frog. Now let me start by giving you a quick history lesson. The gopher frog is a small little brown frog that is most often associated with these beautiful longleaf pine forests. They breed in nearby ponds and in the southern part of their range, they're found with these iconic gopher tortoises, but they're currently threatened because of habitat loss. Traditionally, longleaf pine forests used to cover the entire south. Those forests are now down to somewhere around 3% of their historic range. And as a reminder, they're the forests that need regular fire, something that humans have been doing for thousands of years. Now, only the most connected seem to know this. But what we're finding is that even if we preserve and, and even restore a bunch of these habitats, the gopher frog still might need help. Because they're so rare, biologists at zoos like the North Carolina Zoo have initiated what they call a Head Start program. And our gopher frog head started. Uh, they collect a small portion of the eggs in the few remaining populations, and they take them back to the zoo into areas like this. We're setting up these, basically these little miniature ecosystems for the gopher frog tadpoles so they can grow up and be released. Here, they use their skills in animal care to raise a small population of juvenile frogs. It's awesome to see within a season, in less than a year, how much you can make a difference just by collecting some eggs and taking care of them for a couple months. When they're ready to be released again, each juvenile frog is marked with a colored tab so scientists can identify the year that they were released. And so in two years, if Mike's out doing a survey and finds a gopher frog, he just flips it over and he sees that it has a pink or a blue or an orange or yellow, whatever it is, he can go back in his notes and say that this animal was, you know, came from the zoo in 2014. We, it's not an individual identifier for that individual, it's an individual for the, for the cohort for that season. Right. And some are even fitted with small radio telemetry tags in an effort to figure out what's happening to them after they're released. Radio tracking will let us know where they're going, what's predating on them, how, how far they're moving, which microhabitats they prefer, and those are the things we need to know when it comes to restoring the habitat for them. In fact, this has been the most revealing part of the work. They've discovered another threat. This is one of the stumps that we've released at, and unfortunately, got the fire ant issue right around here. One of the big problems is fire ants. They will just devour gopher frogs. I go out with biologists like this all the time, and usually the take home is that without us, humans, the animals would do just fine. And that's not the case with these gopher frogs. This is a habitat that needs fire. And without fire management and some help with the fire ants, their habitat, and thus the gopher frogs, are declining. So while people restore the habitat with fire and work to control these ants, institutions like the North Carolina Zoo, who are collaborating here with the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission, are doing Head Start programs to keep this species alive. This is a very valuable project out here, not just because it's an endangered species, but because in this ecosystem in general, we have a lot of threatened and endangered species, and there's a lot else that we have to work on. Most people just think of the zoo as this, this place you go to see animals, and we're more than that, you know. We, we do want to educate people about animals and the plights they face in the wild, but we also want to do as much as we can to help them in, in the wild. I think this is one of the most rewarding parts of our job. It's what we uh, get most excited about in our field. The only thing that'll be better is when somebody calls us in a few years because they found one of them. Really happy I can call these people my friends, people who are literally fighting to save an entire species. They definitely deserve all of the help they can get. Uh, check out more of what we're doing here with the zoo right over there. And if you learned something, maybe give it a like. Oh, and we'll see you in the next video.